Live. Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and end and dandruff treatment shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a young man who is one of the delights of the Steve Allen show and who is now starring in the Broadway hit Romanoff and Juliet, Mr. Tom Poston. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's my pleasure to present a young lady who brings charm and intelligence to everything she does, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And I would like to present a great rarity on this panel or anywhere else, a gentleman who has just made a study of the history of the corncob pipe. And I can't <laughs> wait to read it. Bennett Sir. <laughs> I want to introduce you a young man whose radio and television career I've been following ever since he was assigned to Franklin D. Roosevelt at the White House. Now, I'm convinced that if he becomes a little bit more articulate, we're going to hear a lot of this young man, John Charles Daly. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again, it is our hope that the panel will have a very difficult half hour, while we all have a lot of fun watching them have a difficult half hour. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel. A little bit later in the show, we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute after... Let us meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Richard Cobb. Well, we want you, first of all, to meet the expert on the corn cobs. <laughs> and that's a bad way to start a half hour. Well, I'll go home. Would you tell us, first of all, where you come from? From Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia. Nice to have you here with us, Mr. Cobb. The panel, panel, Mr. Cobb. Now, will you join me over here, sir? You know how we keep score, Mr. Cobb? Yes, I do. Then everybody but the panel has the right to know immediately exactly what your line is. All right, panel, a bit of help. Mr. Cobb is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with, uh, well, Bennett Cerf. <clears throat> Mr. Cobb, I know there's a great big Navy yard in Norfolk. Uh, could you have anything whatever to do with the United States Navy? No, I don't. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you work out of doors, Mr. Cobb? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Poston. Does your work uh, call for you to... to uh, do you work in Norfolk? Yes. You're from Norfolk. And you don't have anything to do with the Navy? I mean, no. is it correct that you have nothing to do with the Navy? <coughs> nothing. I would if I lived there. I wouldn't know. Does, do you work, uh, does your work involve a product, uh, Mr. Cobb? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Cobb, you look so athletic. May I assume that your work has nothing to do with athletics? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you an executive? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Surf. Mr. Cobb, does the work you do require some kind of physical dexterity? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you work for a non-profit making organization? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Poston. Does your work require a uh, specialized education? You're no. speaking now of, of taking a degree above and beyond the norms of, let's say, an A, B, or a BS? Uh... John, something about the way you say that makes me want to say, no, I'm not. 
Well, that was a good thing for you to say, but now what do you mean by a special education? Could I ask another kind of question? You may withdraw the question, Mr. Burke. I'll withdraw that question and ask if you... Uh, I assume that you deal in services. Is that correct, Mr. That's Cuff? correct. And, and your work does not require specialized training? Now, that's not that's the, the same, same question. question. No, it isn't the same question. Your work does require specialized training. Well, now, let us assume that any human being come, newly come, so to say, to an occupation must yes. acquire or master certain basic techniques and other attributes which would make him <laughs> a much better servant of whatever employer he may have at the time. Now, if well, what does he do? Why do we go through this every week? What does he do? <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're trying to find out. Now, I will say this. I don't think we give you a flat no on it because it is true that Mr. Cobb would require certain specific knowledge to function efficiently in his line. Well, let me put it this way. Mr. Cobb, would you give me a flat no on my previous question? <laughs> Which previous question? <laughs> You have just taken me, Mr. Cobb, off a seat I've been sitting in in a long time. We finally found somebody who's more confusing than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cobb, does your service apply to uh, men as well as women? Yes. The way you answer that, I, I assume that it would, be, would apply more to one uh, gender than another. Yes. <laughs> would, would that be the male? Of no. the two? No, oh, that's oh. fine. Seven, <laughs> seven down to three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Cobb, she said, hopefully, could I enjoy your services? Yes. Oh. Um, and I would go to Norfolk, Virginia for them. I would in a minute. <laughs> you say you have to go to Norfolk, Virginia for For his specific service? Well, no. that's not... No? Right, no, I'm afraid not. That's eight down and two to go, Mr. Well, he Sir. cruises. Mr. Cobb, do you come into contact with the ladies that you are giving service to? Actual contact. Do you touch them in any way? No. No, no. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Uh, the place that you uh, are employed, Mr. Cobb, would we recognize this place if we saw it? Is there something distinctive about the place that you work? You mean like a sign that describes what happens inside? Like Mr. Cobb's beauty parlor. I mean, would we know... <laughs> that it was Mr. Cobb's? <laughs> no. I mean, would we recognize the, what his job might be from the building in which he works? Yes, good. You might. Uh, do, uh, uh, do you sit at a desk in your job? Yes. Uh, do you give any advice in your job? Yes. Uh, uh, are your services uh, well paid? <laughs> By whose standards? <laughs> Until such a time as we can promise Mr. Cobb more gainful employment <laughs> elsewhere, I will ask the question to be withdrawn. <laughs> Is the service that you give one that is not uh, absolutely necessary for the well-being of a person? They could live without your services. I couldn't, but I mean, there they are... They could. Yeah, they I'm could, afraid they could. ...live without <laughs> your services. Would you consider that whatever you deal in is more of a uh, luxury kind of living? Yes. Uh, there's no product... There's no product, is there? That's right, we, no product. May we have just, it's the last you question. You may have may 15 have a, seconds for right. a conference. He has said he worked in Norfolk, but I wouldn't have to go to Norfolk to get his services. Mm -hmm. So is it, could there be anything about transmission there? Or could he be on television or, or oh, give advice or a bus driver? Is there anything, is your work anything to do with the entertainment business, if Miss Kilgallen is right? And she's not. Mm, no, I don't think so. No. I don't think we Make can call it a two it and a half dollar one, John. You don't go the whole way. <laughs> Ten down and no more to go. Mr. Cobb is the woman's fashion editor for the Virginian pilot in Newport, I mean Norfolk. Virginia. <laughs> and I would only say it's nice to have an expert Mr. Cobb has written briefly, and he was talking to the ladies, and he said, you better start training. There's going to be a lot of you showing this winter. <laughs> <laughs> and this is his expert judgment after being here with, what, 200, over 200 
young ladies who 206 are... women and me. 206 <laughs> women and, and me. Wow. Mr. Cobb, a question. Mr. Cobb, I noticed tonight that Dorothy has rather a long dress on, and Arlene's I dress is a bit now. above her knees. <laughs> Which is correct? <laughs> Question. <laughs> what the gentlemen are wearing is what's correct. <laughs> <laughs> what is going to be the fashion this year? How much of the girl's legs are we going to be seeing? Well, according to the New York uh, fashion designers, uh, virtually all of the ladies' legs below the knees will be showing. Uh, I see that Paris says, uh, what is it, the... Uh, Christian Dior house. Uh, Yves Saint Laurent. He's lowered the hemline. Right, has lowered it about five inches, but all the New York showings have shown them to be just below the kneecap. Well, it's better than that Don Chemise, anyhow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take its place with the War of the Roses and a few other great. Armageddon's of history, Bennett Surf versus the Chemise. <laughs> but one last bit of information about Mr. Cobb. He formerly was a police reporter. That's where you're trained to be a fashion editor. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Nice to have had you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I must admit, panel, I don't think I've ever seen anybody who looked less like he would be doing what Mr. Cobb does. But let's see what we can do with a second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Sign in right there. Sam? Ja Jones, James. And James. <laughs> Mr. James, where are you from? From New York. From New York? New York. New York, all right. Mr. James, the panel. Panel, Mr. James, will you join me over here? And, uh, Mr. James, you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. All right, then we let the folks at home and this nice bunch of folks who are here in the audience know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mr. James is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. James, do you dance? Yes, I dance. There's a question. What did you have in mind? <laughs> well, he looked rather as if he did. Um, may I rule out that dancing is your profession? Yes. You do something else. Do yes. you move about at all in what you do? Yes. Well, it wasn't so silly, was it? <laughs> uh, do you have some special training, but not necessarily a college degree for what you do? Yes. Could Arlene or I do what you do with you? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Well, to pursue uh, Dorothy's line of thought, could Tom or I do with you what you do? Do with him what he does? Yes. If, if, if Arlene and Dorothy would find some difficulty in doing it, <laughs> might men be able to do it with him? Yes, men might be able to do it with them, yes. Is, uh, is your work in any way connected with entertainment? Yes. It is? Yes. Uh, do you uh, appear for uh, emolument before the public? Yes. For the public, yes. You do? Yes. Uh, and you do some kind of a performance that uh, brings you acclaim, correct? Yes. Does that uh, work have, is there any music in any way connected with the work that you do? Yes. Would the music be an accompaniment to what you do? No. no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Does what you do require a certain amount of dexterity? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, do you move uh, with great speed and great uh, uh, judgment? Well, sometimes I do. You have to. <laughs> I have to see you do it, huh? Uh, <laughs> would you, uh, are there other people that do what you do in the same performance? Yes, there are. Uh, do you wear things other than what you have on now when you perform? Yes. Uh, do you have to be acrobatic in your work? Well, 
No, I don't think so. No? No, you don't have to be acrobatic. This is not to say that if you had this particular talent, it might not be useful, but it isn't necessary. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Poston. Mm. Music is not in the nature of an accompaniment to what, do, to what you do. I, no. Uh, no. May I assume that uh, music is what you do? Music is what he does. And that would make it four down and six to go, Mr. Poston. Thank you very much. Miss Kilgallen. The music is there. That's right. The question was but very broadly asked. Does music in any way have anything to do with what you do? But you are not a performing musician. No. And you are not, whatever you do is not accompanied by music. There is just something, some connection with music that we haven't established. Is that correct? Yes, right? it's connected with music, yes. Uh-huh. People um, watch you do what you do in an indoors type of place. No. no. Five down and five to go, oh. Mr. Sir. Well, are you proficient, Mr. James, in some branch of athletic endeavor? Well, if you could call it athletic... Uh, well, I mean, requires uh, coordination well, of muscle and uh, If you want timing. to call it athletic endeavor, then I think Mr. James has answered it well, then he certainly is proficient. In but we can rule out bullfighting and... Uh, can we rule out bullfighting? No, we can't rule I out like bullfighting. It. Yes, I like it. What? Can we rule it out? No, no you can't. That, that gives you a no answer. That well, makes it six down and four to go. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, it's Bennett's all the way. You just, you just wanted Mr. James to have another little five dollars, isn't that That's it? Right. I you because you are. <laughs> I want to be presented with Bennett's ear if you are a bullfighter. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. James is a bull. Thank you very much. Nice to have you with us. Thank you very much. In Peru? Oh, well, I hope I get to Peru to see you throw the bull sometime. <laughs> And now, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, here is a word from our alternate sponsor. We come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with Arlene Francis. Uh, has your picture been in the papers in the last week? We. Mm, we, oui. oui. Mr. Poston. Uh, are you a motion picture actor? Mm, not necessarily. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have any connection with music? Mm, remotely. <laughs> now, remotely. I must answer that question, yes. Mr. Sir? Uh, have you ever been near a piano in a professional way? Uh, I've been near it. Miss Francis? I didn't hear the answer. I've been near it. Miss Francis? Is it possible that this is a young man who is giving a performance, I believe, tomorrow night here in New York. We, mm. oui. yes, <laughs> Mr. Poston. Is it? Are you appearing at the Lewison Stadium? Mm, possibly. Ah. <laughs> you want to do it in unison? Are you more, more long hair than short hair? <laughs> Mr. You... Gallen, that isn't fair. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Van? Van. Yes. <laughs> Van Clyburn. <laughs> Van, if I may, using your first name, may I say that it's very nice to have you here because we had the great pleasure of having your mother as a guest very recently. Well, you gave my mother such a thrill, I don't think we'll ever be able to live with her after that. <laughs> uh, well, I must say that she gave us a thrill, too. She was a wonderfully charming person. I do hope she had a good time. Oh, she
But she had a wonderful time, but I think I was very nervous, and so was my father particularly. But I didn't get to be with him to sympathize with his nerves. But I know that we were sitting, because it was right after the Steve Allen show that I had done right before this um, television broadcast, and we were at the Henderson's home and uh, were having a late supper, and we were sitting on the floor watching, and I, of course, with my heart in my throat, watched Mother, and I was so glad to see that she got on and walked off in one piece. <laughs> so when she came back, she uh, came in the door, and um, Skitch and Ruth and a few other people there said, Oh, Mrs. Clyburn, you were so wonderful. You were just magnificent. And she says, Oh, well, I told them that I had my wardrobe all ready to go for another show. <laughs> and I don't know if we're intruding, but uh, I did read something in the paper today about the issue of your going to Brussels to play with the um, Russian Symphony. Well, I was very pleased that the uh, invitation finally came. I had promised that I would uh, do it um, at their suggestion last May, actually, before I left Moscow. But uh, the invitation hadn't come, and we're trying to work out the proper details. Oh, so it's we'll still know in two or three days. Oh, it's still open. Well, I may say for everybody in the theater that uh, we all owe you a debt of gratitude for your wonderful performance in Moscow. It was great to have an American go there, and actually this is their game more than ours, and to find an American coming out on top was a wonderful well, experience for us. Well, after all, Mr. Day, you know, I have a debt of gratitude. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The debt of gratitude I owe is to the United States, because after all, where was I born? Where do I come from? And where did I get the advantages? Oh, well, it's a wonderful way to put it. Thank you, Dan. Wonderful to thank, thank you, Dan. You take it nice and fun. <laughs> we'll have another contestant after this word from our sponsor. And now a final contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Roseanne Schultz, that's right. <laughs> Would you tell us where you're from, Miss Schultz? Milburn, New Jersey. Milburn, New Jersey. Shala, the panel. Panel, Miss Shala. Will you join me over here, please? And tell me, Miss Shala, do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Fine. Well, in that case, let's let everybody except the panel over there know exactly what your line is. Panel, you have a very brief time, a little more than two minutes. I will tell you that Miss Shawla is salaried, and we'll begin with Tom Poston. Miss Shawla? Yes. You have a very attractive suntan. <laughs> can, can I assume that you spend some time underneath the sun? Uh, very little. <laughs> well, that's some of the time, isn't it? Do you deal in uh, product, Miss Shawla? No, I don't. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then, Miss Shawla, you deal in services. Yes, I do. Can these services be enjoyed by men and women? Uh, yes. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> no. Not, ch not children or animals? Uh, children, yes. Animals, Well, that's no. what I meant. Well, we just pulled back off that limb nicely. Proceed, Miss well, Kilgallen. what did you think I meant, John? Um, <laughs> do the people who receive your services see you? Do they talk to you? Yes, they do. Do you talk back to them? Yes, I do. Do you think that's polite? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you give them anything? Like a piece uh, of paper yes, or a card or information? Mm -hmm. Is it yes. physical rather than just verbal? What you give no. them? Nope. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. <clears throat> do you, Miss Shala, do you teach them or advise them on anything? Mm, some degree. Do you demonstrate anything to no. them? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you uh, tell them about something that will increase their knowledge of a certain subject? Mm. Inform them in some no. way? No, like not really. No. Not really. Four down and six to go, Mr. Poston. Do your uh, customers, do you deal with customers? No, I don't. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would they be called either clients or pupils? No, they wouldn't. Six down and four to go, mm -hmm. and no more time, so it's ten down and no more to go. And this is going to surprise you all, but it's a good reason to be that way. Sick, I mean, because Miss Schlauer is a nurse. <laughs> a down and 
Doctor's Hospital in New York City. Well, thank you very much, Carrie. We didn't have more time. We thank you very much. And on that happy note, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Arlene French. Good night, John. Good night, Tom. Nice to have you again. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, Mr. Kilgallen. Nice good night, Mr. Poston. Charming. again. Good night, Mr. Sir. You won't see Arlene again till 7 o'clock tomorrow morning on television. What? 7 o'clock tomorrow morning she's on. Good oh, night, yes, John. I know. That's early. Tom, you feel better now, do you? Well, I don't know. Could I have another visit? From, uh, can I have another? No. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. This has been a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten.